the first time I visited one of these big bird markets, I was just shocked and astounded to see the volume of birds that were in the market and the number of different species. The Songbird Black Market is immense. It crossed every border, it's, it's across the globe. We really felt that it was so important to, to actually start working with some of these species before it was too late, before they were driven over the precipice and became extinct. The ones in Jakarta, particularly the, the one called Pramuka Bird Market, which is actually the biggest wildlife market on the planet, is a really depressing place to visit, actually, as someone who's a bird lover, someone that's very passionate about conservation. Unless we can control and stop the illegal wildlife trade in these songbirds, the inevitable result is going to be the extinction of multiple species across Southeast Asia. So these forests are really are falling silent. So I've worked in the zoo community as a aviculturist, if you like, a, a bird enthusiast for many, many years. Conservation has always been the, the driving force behind everything that I do. And in Indonesia in particular, the, the songbird crisis is at such a height that, that I felt that we really needed to do as much as we possibly can to try to protect these wonderful endemic species. I've been working within Indonesia with partner organisations, conservationists uh, for a number of years trying to save those species that are being driven to the edge of extinction through the illegal wildlife trade. As you walk in through these dark, damp corridors, the initial thing that hits you is the smell, the smell of birds and bird mess, bird feces and under every corner there's a little shady bird shop where there's birds cramped into tiny little cages under the cupboards in dark corners. There's often dead birds in the gutter where they've thrown out to feed to the cats of the birds that haven't survived over the night. These birds are trapped by local trappers and then they go to a middleman who trades the birds across the whole Indonesian archipelago. These birds may have to travel for many days, over even thousands of miles, to get there. The vast majority of these are songbirds. They're unique in that their adaptations are amazing. They have beautiful colours generally. Many of them are, are bright green, some are red. They very often, of course, have very lovely songs. And those are the ones that are most highly prized, the birds that have incredible voices. So one element of the bird keeping industry within Indonesia is the bird singing competitions. And these are incredible events to see, to witness. At these competitions, there'll be many people there. All of the bird keepers will be hanging their birds up under a large canopy. There'll be 30 or 40 birds in each competition. It's a really frenzied environment where all of the bird owners are screaming and shouting at their birds to try to encourage them to sing louder. The value of these prizes is incredibly high for the top champion. The top champion white rump Sharma, for example, the prize could be something like $50,000 for the winner. Or occasionally we've heard rumors that the winner will win a house or a big fancy motor car. Very often the wild caught birds are the highest in demand, if you like. They're the birds that they really want. So they always feel that the wild caught birds have, have more vigor than the captive birds. That sort of fuels the trade in these illegally caught birds rather than focusing on the captive bred bird. If the bird is a protected bird, you will use the ring. And so some of those birds have leg bands on, leg rings on, which is which are able to identify them as captive bred. There is an element of captive breeding going on, but they also sometimes put leg bands onto birds that are clearly wild caught. These birds are really important to the ecosystem within Southeast Asia. Many of the birds are 
fruit eaters, so they're very important seed dispersers. They're also very important pollinators as well. There may be elements here where the insectivores play a role in terms of, of pest control within the environment. So they're extremely important. It's actually very difficult to, to rescue or confiscate birds from the markets. But when we do, they end up in our conservation breeding centre partners in Indonesia, where they're able to breed and reproduce, and with hopefully with the ultimate aim of getting these birds back out into the wild. But of course, it's very important that we have safe, secure environments where we can do so. So we have to work and we want to work with local communities so that we can create nice environments for the, the wildlife, but also for the, the local people in Indonesia as well. And we're looking at alternative livelihoods for these people. So the, the bird trappers, we want to change their mindsets and we want to give them alternative occupations or livelihoods so that they don't need to rely on catching birds from the wild. The main sort of ambition, if you like, is really to try to have bird watchers of the future rather than bird keepers. That's a, that's a long-term aim, but hopefully we'll get there in the future.